Uh, I want now just to turn to drought reform. Uh, as we have merged from uh, the eight or nine years of drought, uh, if you start from the premise as I do, that a more productive and successful agricultural sector is in Australia's national interest, it is necessary for our success as a nation, then you really do need to evaluate the level of government funding and support provided to industry through the prism of, of productivity. We've already discussed two areas today where I believe government action is essential. The last area I wanted to talk to you about was a drought reform. Uh, recently, the government accepted the advice of the National Rural Advisory Council not to renew the exceptional circumstances declarations that operate in 20 areas throughout southeastern Australia. These areas spread across New South Wales, Victoria and South Australia and do represent a significant proportion of the Australia's farming land. The reality is uh, that drought in southeastern Australia has broken. The ending of EC assistance in such a large area does provide an opportunity for reflection about the policy and its effectiveness over the past decade. Over $2.5 billion in exceptional circumstances assistance has been paid to farmers and small businesses between November 2007 and 31 December 2010. And despite this significant investment, in its current form, exceptional circumstances assistance has provided support to farmers in drought but has not bolstered or increased or turned its uh, attention to increasing their productive capacity. In 2009, the Productivity Commission found, amongst other things, that, and I quote, uh, farmers in EC declared areas who did not receive support were generating higher farm net cash incomes, had higher off-farm investment income to draw on, and were earning more off-farm wages and salary income. Combine uh, these findings with the higher debt position and debt to equity ratio of those farmers receiving assistance in comparison to their peers and the incentives in the EC system are not geared uh, towards effective uh, preparation both financially and in terms of farm practices for building resilience in farming. Another conversation that must be had is around the state Commonwealth split for drought relief funding and the way in which this influences state government actions. We must ensure, in my view, that we have a system that embraces a contribution from both the Commonwealth and the states for the benefit of farmers. A system similar to the natural disaster relief and recovery arrangements that operates in response to floods and cyclones is one of those that's worthy of consideration, but it too is also subject to review at this period. Uh, it is uh, where the government's contribution uh, of course escalates depending on the size of the overall response required. Uh, state funding for the Western Australian drought pilot is a step in the right direction, with the state government contributing around 20 per cent of the total funding. And my counterpart in WA, Minister Redman, has been a keen driver for the WA drought trial. Uh, and of course uh, that pilot uh, has been, uh, is now in the process of being uh, reviewed, but can I just acknowledge the contribution uh, the Minister has made to driving that reform. Uh, the course, the pilot is uh, trialling measures that help farmers uh, and businesses, farm businesses broadly, to prepare for future challenges and provide more effective and better coordinated social support for farming families. And since uh, 1 July 2010, the drought reform pilot has provided assistance, including income support to farming communities uh, without requiring a climactic trigger, such as exceptional circumstances declarations uh, before government steps in. There has been uh, broad support for drought policy reform and for the pilot from the National Farmers Federation and other key industry groups. There's also been strong interest in the pilot measures from farmers and communities, uh, particularly from the Farm Planning Program and Centrelink Services. Uh, for example, uh, Centrelink's rural service officers and social workers have made over 4,100 customer contacts with 500 farm or home visits to improve access to government services in the trial area that's now in uh, Western Australia. 2,001 farmers are receiving income support through the Farm Family Support Program 
which helps uh, eligible farmers meet basic household expenses, and 93 applications for building farm businesses grants for projects to assist farmers to manage and prepare for the impacts of drought and other challenges have been received and processed. While interest, of course, has been strong in this area, it is uh, too early to assess the extent to which the pilot measures will achieve uh, their objectives. Uh, measures will continue to be monitored uh, with a detailed review uh, scheduled uh, this year, uh, which I have already announced, uh, and it will really inform the next steps that we will need to take to how we build on uh, building farm resilience uh, and community resilience in areas which have been affected by a drought. The issue, in conclusion then, the issue of food productivity and the government's policies that drive a more pr profitable food sector through the National Food Plan, uh, investment in research and development and drought reform are of uh, great importance to all Australians. This year we have of course been hit with some of the worst natural disasters this country has ever faced and the agricultural sector has quite frankly taken a beating along with, of course, many communities across regional and rural Australia, and of course, in some towns and cities. Uh, and of course, they, this area uh, is uh, and has experienced in recent months uh, some challenges that they will uh, meet and face, because when you talk to the rural and farming community, uh, they are an optimistic bunch. Uh, the experiences, of course, have highlighted uh, the imperative of the Gillard government uh, to get uh, these policies right for the future for the farming community. Uh, I'm committed to building on the strength and resilience of our primary industries into the future. And with your uh, expertise and support, we can adapt and improve and extend our production and our uh, profitability. Uh, this uh, ABARES uh, Outlook Conference does provide a valuable opportunity for you to all contribute to the government's decision on the best way to build that strength and resilience. The expertise, the experience, the knowledge of uh, the many speakers that are here today and here uh, for the conference uh, are the key drivers that will lead the sector to a strong and sustainable future. Uh, thank you. First, I'd like to thank you very much for that opening address. Uh, you are now officially, of course, the man with the plan, <clears throat> and we look forward uh, to how the National Food Plan develops. Uh, we note your offer uh, of consultation, which I'm sure will be taken up, and I particularly look forward myself to what you'll do with the Productivity Commission report on research and development as a former member of the CRC for Irrigation Futures, which has now come to the end of its life, I do think it is incredibly important to get the best out of our researchers and then get that work out into the field.